Oh, I want to do one of those 23 and me things too. I have no idea. Like, I know I'm Irish. Um, like everything, my, my dad's side of the family has everything pretty much recorded where, um, you know, like we know we basically the Mullen family and, uh, the United States came from two brothers. So we know that. And so I know I'm Irish quite a bit, but I don't really know what my mom's side of the family is. She says German, but she's like part German, part Irish. So it's like, okay, yeah. so we don't really know. Cause we, most white people are just a, so you what don't say that's that, what, European whatever exactly and you just pick whatever white, <laughs> white yeah ethnicity. like mine says Scotland and then it just says England and Northwestern Europe <laughs> that's thirty three percent and then Ger- Germanic Europe so Germany I guess, yeah that area area so like east isn't Germany near east like wouldn't that be um, Eastern Europe right. I'm like, too dumb, too dumb know. for this conversation. I don't know. Um, Jesse, what I, part of your family tree um, does that shitty goatee come from? <laughs> not the Irish one. It's not red. <laughs> that's that's a, probably why I have a red beard. Is the Scottish? <laughs> a little, that's I a thought little, that Jesse. I rude. thought Jesse was like getting into art for a minute because I couldn't see the part that connects like the beard to the no, mustache. It doesn't. It, just, it doesn't yeah. really. Mine doesn't this, really either. If I let it get start, short like, enough, no. I have. Or which side is it? I think this side connects. This side doesn't like at all, which is just awkward for everybody. But <laughs> for everyone okay. involved, everyone involved. Looks, it looks super awesome, dude. My That's my hilarious. son, so I shaved it. I was just bored. I was just like, ah, I just it was looking patchy. That's and I what you do watched. when you're bored. Yeah, well, I was just I got out of the shower and I was like, I don't like my beard right now. I trimmed it, which I thought looked like, when it was long, it was gross. I didn't like it, so I like trimmed it and it looked good. But then it's just like it's not very thick on the cheeks. So I was like, oh, I'll just shave this and then see what my wife says. Well, she didn't even notice when I, I shaved it. She, I came home and she didn't even notice. And I was like, whatever. And then my son comes <laughs> so in. mad. I was a little mad. I was like, it's supposed to be dramatic. You don't even pay and she was attention like, to me anymore. Yeah. So she's sitting there talking to me face to face, doesn't notice, and then walks away. And my son comes in. He's like, hey, dad. I'm like, what's up? And he's just like, it just stares at me. It doesn't say anything. I was like, what's up, dude? And he was so like perplexed. He was like, something's not right, but I can't, I can't put my finger on it type thing. And I was like, what's going on, buddy? And he was like, your beard? Like, like I'm Ron Burgundy. Like I, he was all confused about it. Um, but uh, awesome. yeah. Anyway. You're like, I, where's my dad? This guy looks like he didn't check in with his probation officer last week. <laughs> Mine's getting pretty bad. I was like, Especially like, the, the neck beard. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, him? You're talking about Me. him. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I thought, I said, I think, I don't know. Anyway, I said I look like every dad from every Little League baseball game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I look like. It's not yeah. good. Who hasn't really grasped the fact that he's a dad at that yeah. point? You know, he still yeah. thinks he's in his, you know, early 20s. Mm-hmm. It's you know, funny. It's funny. I, I used to have a goatee like that, and that's like all I ever had. And then, oh, really? I just, yeah. Like I, did that. I just, yeah, I shaved it like that. And then I was like, why am I doing this? And I just yeah. let it all grow. And I'm like, this is way easier. Just yeah. shave it all at the same. I just yeah. had the goatee forever, like from like high school to, you know, whenever it was okay to start growing beards. And, um, I didn't realize how fat it made my face look. It just made me look my it made my cheeks look like chipmunks. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Well, so my my mother-in-law's never been a fan of the beard. Like she's just not a beard person, right? And uh but my father-in-law has a goatee. And she loves goatees. Well, okay. So, she always like she doesn't say back in compliments, but she, you can tell she doesn't like my beard, right? Especially when I get long, she'll be like, "Oh, you're your beard's long. That's cool. And just like leave it at that. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying, you know? And then for, in my stocking, she got me a bunch of shaving like stuff. Like she got me like, <laughs> like shave cream and all this. That's and I'm awesome. like, I, I get what you're like after shave. I'm like, I get it. Okay. And then, so then I shave it into just the goatee. Right. <laughs> I go over there and she's like, Oh my gosh. It looks so good. And I'm like, yeah, because I look like your husband. Your husband has a goatee. I look exactly like him. Of course you think that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, well. But, you know, what you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> what, 
what you gonna do? <laughs> you well, gonna do? not grow a goatee. <laughs> That's right. Not shave it into that I can abomination. Tell you, I can tell you what I'm not gonna do. That. Well, I keep threatening my wife. Jesse looks like he smokes Pall Malls and rooted for Jeff Gordon. <laughs> What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm wearing oh. those those shirts that are just white with like the NASCAR. Like it looks like it's been spray painted on. Yeah, it's all cracked because you washed it so many times. Yeah, airbrushed NASCAR. That's yeah, that's what it is. The airbrushed NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a big Matt Kenseth fan. I'll tell you what. Like this is <laughs> like jeez. Oh man, yeah. I, I keep telling her I'm just gonna shave the bottom and just leave the stash, which I may do this next week just to see her get pissed off. Because Brooke, Dude, what hates cracks mustache. me up is when like old guys have a mustache, but they shave like half of it, so it's like just on their They're, like lip. a pinstripe. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, what weird. did you do? Yeah, you I feel like why? a big please bushy don't stop if you're gonna do that. It's like yeah. the woodworker thing to do, right? I guess. I yeah. hate it when I mine gets too long and you start like getting in your mouth. I'm like, okay, we're done. <laughs> Yeah, it's I have too to much. Keep it, I have to keep it trimmed. I just like go right up my lip and just keep yeah. cutting it because mm. I can't. I can't have it too long. Sam, Sam has like the longest. Right, it goes like over his bottom lip. <laughs> I'm like, like, how do you eat? I'm like, what are you doing? What if he's you like, want to eat like yogurt or something? Yeah, he's oh. got to open his mouth like three <laughs> times as big just to get food passed. He's like, <laughs> it's like, like oh, I usually it. just oh. usually just, just drink it. Yeah, it's just one of those blend into a smoothie shake, just for milkshake a straw. straws. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, that's anyway, awesome. you guys be in the shop this week? Yeah. Well, you say did we or will we? I said did you? I think I. Said, mm-hmm. I don't know what. <clears throat> I'm drunk. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I keep seeing him go to that whiskey glass. I, I know. I'm going to probably have another one by the end, and this is you my just second made one, it before so. right before we started. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it was empty because I already drank one, so it's oh, probably it. it's going it's to be a good mm-hmm. podcast. Everybody. Sweet. I like uh, it. I'm on. Uh, I'm drinking Yingling tonight. Are you? That's an East Coast thing. Sounds Apparently. like an Asia thing. Yeah, it's the it's the country's oldest brewery. Am I wrong it or is. am I right? No, you are correct. It's only East Coast, which is weird though. But it's Older very than popular. Buffalo right Trace. There. No, that's a distillery. So it's oh, a brewery. Sorry, this shit. is just too... Jesus. God, someone get this. Well, guy you, yeah, you can, you education. can tell who the sober one is. Yeah, <laughs> and this trio. <laughs> I wonder where my water came from. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I spent a uh, ton of time in the shop in the last couple of days. Um, you know, we're snowed in here. Of course we did our podcast last week. And, um, after we did our podcast, we got another like five or six inches on top of that, which is a ton for us. Um, so it pretty much showed, you know, snowed us in. I worked from home and then was got a bunch of stuff done in the afternoons because my kids stayed outside the entire time playing. We had nothing else to do. Carter's uh, hockey got pushed. So I got a ton of time in the shop and I was loving it. His ice hockey got pushed because it snowed. Yeah. yeah. Makes yeah. sense. It's a very southern <laughs> thing. Very yeah, weird. It's very <laughs> hey, I don't think they cancel on. it. I don't think they cancel it in Canada. They put his old pair of skates on. It's just called down Tuesday. Road. Snows mm-hmm. in Canada is just Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You know. That's like here though. It's been like it's been snowing pretty consistently. Probably every day or every other day it's been snowing. But um yeah. It's we're used to it. So everyone just goes to work as normal nothing changes everyone's just mm-hmm. like yeah shovel the driveway well, is, this morning what's the temperature there like right now well well this morning i mean yesterday was freaking cold it was like in the teens yesterday but the average is like 20s cold days it'll get down to single digits you know it's kind of but that's all the way through pretty much winter and then springtime hit but i mean we have good summers you guys are hot and humid and, mm-hmm I yeah. hate summer. Yeah, I can't. We like our summer days are usually in the eighties, <laughs> like highs. That's highs. I mean, we'll the get in the nineties a couple times, but not very much. Dude, I was telling Sam or not Sam, the editor, Sam, Beach to Desert, Sam. He was like, "What?" Or I think it was him. somebody. Anyway, oh no, it was Earn from ATB Creation. He was asking like, "What are?" Because they're from Boston or whatever, and he's like, "What?" Hold on how, a second, Brandon. What's your summer the, like? What? Let me just stop you right there, Brandon. How is Brandon such a social butterfly? It's so true. But yeah. will not go around anybody in person. Yeah. Only on digital. Like yeah. you won't even talk to your neighbors, <laughs> but yet you That's talk to more people yeah. on That's social media than any other places. person I know. 
Yeah, when we go places, because I grew up here, I know people, and she's like, oh, God, there we go again. I just be talking to people <laughs> for like 20 minutes. Well, I, I was talking to uh, Sam about this. That There's a lot. I found have found that a lot of YouTubers that are really big are also super introverted, right? Yeah. Like, but they But they're comfortable talking to a camera because it's not an actual person. Right. And even though they can interact with people, it's a lot easier. So I don't know if Brandon feels this way, but I know yeah. that there's a lot of YouTubers I follow that either I've, I've taught like a messaged or whatever, and they're super closed off. And it's mm. like, oh, you're an introvert. Like you're not because I try to be very friendly no matter who messages, you know, and stuff like that. And so do you, Brandon. You're pretty good at it, yeah. too, um, sometimes. And Most, um, whatever. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think it's I think it makes it easier for a lot of introverted people when it's just a camera, you know. Yeah, and so they sure. can this is a successful way for introverted people to be kind of extroverted, which is interesting. It's kind of accurate. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, continue with your story. I just thought I found that interesting. Oh, somebody yeah. about temperatures. Yeah, yeah Ernie he, yeah. or Ernie, whatever. I think it's J and D Builders is his page now. But uh, he he was like, "What are your guys' summers like there?" And I said, "Hot as shit. Like it's over a hundred degrees for weeks on end." And I was like, "The low at night a lot of times is like in the nineties. He's like, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, yeah, because it's the cold there, you know, Boston or wherever they are, right around that area." Yeah. But, I'm over it. <sighs> it doesn't get that hot like temperature wise here, but it gets pretty humid. Yeah, um, it's dry here. Like our humidity is usually like in the twenty percent area, yeah. twenty five. Yeah, we're which super is dry nothing. in Utah. Uh, our swings, like our temperature swings, are what's worst. Like the worst thing in Nashville. So you know we've got, I mean, total we probably got six to eight inches of snow, ice on the ground. You can't hardly drive up my street not in four wheel drive right now. And it was fifty four today, and I was in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that was so it's, so within one day it switched like 30 degrees yeah, yeah complete that's... complete switch um, my buddy lives in crazy. texas and he's like oh so there's snow on the ground it was 76 today <laughs> i was like what <laughs> yeah he's like, yeah or 74 or something like that yeah did you guys hear about that huge swing in temperature in colorado it broke records it swung <laughs> I want to say 60 or 80 degrees. I had to be 60. There's no way it was 80. But wow. I think it went from 20 degrees one day. The next day it was 80 degrees. Jeez. It's crazy. My parent or my grandparents live there. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. That's right. crazy. Can you imagine just being freezing the next day? You're like, oh my gosh, I got to wear a tank top. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. My NASCAR tank top. <laughs> you you look like a guy who would wear a tank top. <laughs> That's right. Mustard stains. But not like not like a not like a you know it's not like a bro the tank. wide. Yeah, it's the wide yeah. the wide ones that go all the way to the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. really, it's just a t shirt with the sleeves cut off. That's all. It is. Yeah. yeah, it's a muscle shirt. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd rock it too. Just saying, you got to get pockets though, so you can put your cigarettes in the front. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Today's podcast is sponsored by Boss Hammer Company. Boss Hammer is an American company that prides themselves in manufacturing every part of their hammers in the USA. The Boss Hammers have a patented design that allows the hammer to be also used as a speed square, letting you accurately mark studs and angles fast. They come in poly fiberglass handles, titanium, and hickory, a bunch of different sizes and weights to match your needs. You can also get your company logo lasered onto any of the hickory hammers that they offer. Go check out Boss Hammer Company on their social media and send them a message letting them know that you heard about them on the Go Build Something podcast. Go to their website and see what they offer at www.bosshammerco.com. That's www.bosshammerco.com. To get 15% off any Boss Hammer, use promo code GBS podcast. That's all capitalized. GBS podcast once again all capitalized at checkout at www.bosshammer.com and get 15% off your order. Uh, um, did you get a shop, Jesse? I saw you do some welding, man. Yeah, so today I got like four hours of metal working today, which was awesome. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of the first thing where I did it, was a little bit more intricate. Like I did my um. I did my welding workbench, which is on my YouTube. Go check it out. Make sure you subscribe. But um, <laughs> I did my, I did that, but it was pretty much just butt joints and welding in. It was pretty simple, rudimentary stuff. And this one um, is for my nightstands and their legs. They're a foot tall, 
Um, and they're one by two, um, one inch by two inch, like, I don't know what would they be? Not beams, but like square tubing, one inch by two inch tubing, but it's tubing. an eight, yeah, yeah, an eighth inch thick. So it's like pretty thick mm-hmm. stuff. And, um, I mitered them and then I actually like, I had to miter them in the freaking Harbor Freight miter saw thing I have, you know, takes forever. So it's freaking, it took me a long time to get all those cause I'm doing four legs. Um, it, which means, you know, three pieces per each leg. And then I basically welded those together and then put a flat bar on the bottom and welded that to the flat bar, which will now attach to the bottom of the nightstands. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I got them primed and painted and pretty much the whole process from start to finish, I got them done today, which was really cool. So if you're going to do a lot of that, you should look in, well, if you have room, you should look into like getting a used, uh, horizontal bandsaw. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that you just cut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's, they bevel there. They, uh, miter too. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. I need to do it cause it'd be a lot faster. Dude. This one's just because, you know, the big grinding wheel. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just racing wheel. Well, the one that we had in the old metal shop that I used to work at, it was on a hydraulic. So it like self lowered. Right. So you could just set it and just watch it. And it was kind of, it was really nice actually. Um, But much better than, than what you're using Jesse. But I mean, in a pinch it works and you're just getting into it and you're Mm kind of, it's kind of the same things you do when you start woodworking, you know, you grab the tools that you need just to make sure you can use them. That's exactly what it is. Cause the grinder I bought, I had a, I have a power, a battery powered grinder, the DeWalt one. But the batteries die super quick, yeah. You know? yeah. And so um, I needed a corded one, so I went and bought not the crappiest one at Harbor Freight, also not like the the most expensive one because whatever, it's a grinder. So I got one that does plug in, and it's actually a decent grinder, and it's like Bauer or something. Yeah. And I so I bought that, and I bought the uh, basically the cutoff wheel. And uh, that's what I've been starting with. And I'm pretty, you're right. I'm starting over like I did woodworking. I started yeah. with cheap tools. And the only thing that's not cheap, my thing is my welder. And that's a very nice welder. And I'm really yeah. happy with it. So um, it's been, I mean, this the smart, if you're getting into welding, because I was so intimidated by it. And I don't know if you guys were the same way when you first started, but I was so intimidated to be like, oh, there's so much you have to learn. And there's like intricate stuff and you could blow yourself up or catch fire or something you know you go through all these things you're like (laughs) only if you're in a silo (laughs) yeah that's right (laughs) and so um you know and so i was pretty intimidated by it but this system's super cool so if you have basically adjust it adjusts for you so you all you have to do is choose the thickness once that thickness is set it does everything else for you you know it does thickness and speed but you just so like all I did was I went to one eighth inch thick metal is what I'm working on, hit the button and then all the other two settings which is what velo is it velocity, I don't know oh, no, speed voltage heat, right no it's, yeah. yeah it's voltage voltage and, voltage and one other thing wire speed uh, maybe yeah. just wire speed but that yeah. adjusts for like how far away you are from the contact like it's a system that actually like if you're if you're getting too far away it'll start to speed up the wire so that it way it tries to keep it consistent across, hmm. you know? And then if you're for, if you get closer, it'll slow it down. So, and then it, it'll amp the voltage and all that hmm. stuff. Um, so it's, it's really cool and it's pretty simple. And I, I, you know, by the end of the fourth leg, I, I felt pretty good. Like I was starting to get decent beads, you know, around yeah. the mitered and maybe it's I not really that down. hard, but when you start doing like TIG and stuff, I don't, I still have, I've yeah. only done, I've done TIG once and I, and the guy that was teaching me said I was doing good, but I didn't have, I was just doing uh the hell they call it, basically melting the metal onto itself and using that as filler, not using a rod. Yeah. So okay, I thing. feel like once you add the other hand in and have to like feed the rod as you do it, I yeah. feel like that's where it would get real. Yeah. Well, have, if, have you seen, I don't know, cause I started, I've been following more welding guys. There's a guy named, he actually, I feel bad for him. He had like 200 or 300,000 followers and his account got hacked and stolen mm-hmm. and just deleted. Jeez. So he, and he was like, he, every video, cause he edits some really good, was just killer. But he came up with this little device for, uh, oh, yeah. the sticker. 3D printed thing. 
Uh, I don't know. He sells like, them. Like sits on your fingers and then goes yeah, through. Basically, it. Yeah, basically, you, you just yeah. you do this. You just all you have to do is do this, and right. it's it's like a little wheel thing and just scrolls. And oh it's no, just, I haven't seen that. It's pretty cool. So it's like and the the stick goes in it, and he just yeah. does this, and he just goes like this, and it huh. just feeds it. No, the so one I saw really was like simple. you stick it's your cool. fingers into it, so it like, and then the wire goes through the plastic, so that way you don't have to hold, squeeze the rod between your fingers. It just yeah, goes so it does that piece. too. Yeah, it does and that too, and then run it it's simple. With your hand, with but your anyway, phone. his uh, I think it's Dabs Wellington is his uh, <laughs> name. I'm pretty sure. Um, Did you see that TikTok video really I sent cool. you? The welding? No. Yeah, oh, dude, it's savage. <clears throat> really? I know you sent it to me, and it was yeah. Un- amazing. Yeah, he basically yeah. braided he was, the weld. Yeah, they call it like basket weaving or whatever. Or we mm. yeah, basket mm. weave something. Yeah, but it's like a. It's like the puddles are laid on top of each other, but interweaved, stacked. Oh, like, I did. I next saw that. to each other. Yeah, I saw it. Because somebody commented and said, like, that was done by a machine, quit lying. And then he filmed himself doing it. And I yeah. was like, what? And he's like walking the cup, but it was super crazy. Yeah. So the guy I'm talking about, too, he does like a lot of that artwork stuff where mm-hmm. he like will do it at high temperatures, too. So it discolors yeah. and stuff. It's really cool. That, yeah. That, that the stuff's temperature impressive. makes the different colors. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. I have, I have the, the, uh, it's, I don't know. It's like a gas thing, but it's basically to, to discolor, um, uh, metal to make it that kind of blue and orange shiny and mm-hmm. i have it i have to go get i think it's oxygen like o2 and i can't remember what the other thing is maybe it might just be straight argon I was but say argon yeah yeah argon's what i have already but it's an argon co2 mixture just for welding but this one is you know it's two different things but you basically have it goes into one pipe and then torch you just, I don't know if it's a torch or not. I have to have an acetylene torch. It could be. I don't know. It's pretty basic. Honestly, I haven't looked at it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm new yeah. to this. <laughs> well, so. to be fair, I've only used a torch a few times when I was a kid. I don't even have a benzomatic torch. I've never even. I need oh, to really? get one. I need to get one in case my. Get the uh, map gas one. The grind yellow. Or my iron goes out, but I've never gotten it. Mm. So. Yeah, the yellow, the yellow can of the. The map gas is way better than the propane or mm. butane, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. I just never needed it, but probably be good because I've never done anything burnt. Have you guys done burnt stuff like make no. any artwork and burn it? No. No. Me neither. Never was a fan. No yeah. shishuki s- bond here. I was going to say, how do you say it? I don't even know how you say it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so there is a. I think it's, it's named after your drink. um there's a guy uh you i know uh, jp knows him i don't think brandon is because i think we sent him back but he builds canoes uh pret yeah pretzler i started following him after you said that yeah Yeah. so he he's an amazing boat builder but he had a house he well first of all he's the coolest truck period the coolest truck uh ever like it's yeah it's like a 19 old step side yeah, it's cool with it. And he redid the the bed of it, and then on the inside, he put a bunch of like little cookies from like mm-hmm. branches, and then epoxied it. So the whole floor is like all these. It's a really mm-hmm. cool truck. Um, but he but did a Trent Presler is his name. Yeah, Presler. And yeah. then um, he did his uh, fence. And it's like a really cool horizontal fence. His watch is why I did mine in the front because I thought it looked cool. But then he burned it black, and with his house that he redid, it was really really cool. Yeah, um, yeah, it's like so, the natural way to preserve the wood, which is weird. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. but that's like the whole purpose of that is to preserve the yeah. wood so it doesn't rot or anything. Because it, it's good for outdoors and stuff, right? Like right. that's one of the biggest thing reasons yeah. they do it. They used to do it like siding and stuff. I just wonder. So I know that he used some type of clear coat over that fence. Like he burned Did it, he? used some type of clear coat, um, and put it on with a brush. I just wonder if you brush up against that fence, would like turn your clothes black? That's a good point. Like if it flakes um, off. Yeah, it was, you know, it's basically charcoal. You know, he charcoaled it up. So yeah. Um, I wonder. I've always wondered that. Like with that stuff, I've seen people do it for a couple different things. Uh, if it would like when you grab it or whatever, if it transfers that color, uh, just like Probably. charcoal wood or something does. Yeah, I'm sure it yeah. does. But there's some way you can seal it. I'm sure than it doesn't. But, um. 
But yeah. But anyway, so getting back to your welder, just real quick, um, yeah. I had a question about it. So all of that is automatic, and of course, when I was welding, which was eighteen years ago, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to say eighteen ninety six? It's actually <laughs> <laughs> it's in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> We barely It'll had be, electricity. It's actually 19 years ago. Now that I think about it, uh, when I was working in a in a metal shop, yeah, um, I was. We didn't have I automatic was seven stuff at the time. I was seven <laughs> years old at the time. Go ahead. We didn't have automatic fancy stuff like that, uh, yeah. which is really cool. I mean, that's awesome because I think it's going to get more people into the craft and and it'd be easier for people to learn it. But can you micro adjust over those? So yes. if you want it to, and I, I, I call it getting hotter, but you also said voltage. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want a little more voltage or you want a little more speed, depending on your type of welding, can you override that stuff easily? Yeah. So you can just do a normal MIG setting and do it all by hand manually. Right. So if you wanted to do that, if you're, you know, if you want to change it up, you could totally could. Um, for me, I just don't know exactly what voltage and all that stuff I do. I mean, every one has like the panel that comes up and it has all the charts that you can follow. Yeah. Um, but it's like a baseline though. Yeah. And that's a baseline. So I just do the smart setting because I don't have to do it. And then it's really, it's seriously just even getting out of the box. It was a plug and play setup. Like, um, what, uh, what brand is that? It's an ESAB, so E S A B, um, which apparently, because um, I've talked to, they're one, they're a company I work with now, which is fantastic. They're one of my sponsors, um, and so you know, take everything I say, I guess, with a grain of salt. But this is all true. Like I love yeah, that. They're awesome. Freaking welder, yeah. And so I didn't. They're just getting in, getting bigger here in the states. Um, they do a lot, like they're the welding company for NASA and they do a bunch of industrial stuff, CNC welder, like type stuff too. Um, but they're huge in Europe. They're the biggest welding brand in all of Europe. And so that's where, you know, they, they're kind of home bases and everything. Um, but coming over here, they're kind of the new kids on the block, sort of, not really, because they have a ton of experience and all that stuff. But when it yeah. comes to they're they're really trying to focus on making it easier for people to get into the craft. And that smart MIG system makes it super easy. That being said, they're more expensive, right? Like yeah. it's all I think Lincoln has something similar also. Yeah. Do they? You just put in like the thickness of the metal and it kind of auto adjust yeah yeah I, you assume that as it becomes more and more popular that right. they're that they're gonna uh like everyone's gonna do it right yeah. everyone i've can never used the esau but systems. i have we have well aaron has that one of their hoods and i really like it it's super comfortable yeah it looks yeah, like I, uh the halo helmet yeah yeah and well, i got i have the one i have like the basic one and i want one of those so bad they have one that's like they had just cheaper had than the one i freaking bought oh really yeah i bought the miller uh digital infinity or digital yeah infinity something like that i don't know and uh it was like 350 bucks and i think the one he got's like 300 and it's like just as nice it's yeah. worth every penny not to burn your eyes though that is the right. one of the worst experiences a part oh, yeah. of being actually burned uh yeah. that i ever had it was awful well yeah. one thing i always take for granted is like my hood has like the turns on and off right you mm-hmm. know Auto and yeah so like my father-in-law came over when i was setting up my welder and he's like he's like let me see the hood and i was like all right so i gave it to him he's like oh my gosh you can see out of this thing and i was like yeah. well i'd hope so and I just like did not understand that's not how it was. Right? And, I was no, like, no. and I was like, what no. do you mean? It was just black until you started going? He was like, yeah. yep. Yep. And I was like, he's like, that's why everyone you see everybody do that. And it's like flip your head ah, down. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And it so, was horrible. Yep. Especially so, when you're trying yeah. to like stick weld and you're trying to like put it where it needs to go and then just hold it there and then flip your head down without moving yeah. your hands. And yeah. then just and start then, once you start, you can kind of see, but it's still not as not oh, even yeah. close to what these ones are. You'd be an inch and a half off your <laughs> yeah. You're trying to weld. <laughs> you exactly. just weld it off to the side. Especially when I was a kid trying to I was like 12, 13, and my dad's trying to teach me how to stick weld. And I'm like, throw the hood down. And then I'm like, you said, way out, not even close. And then I'm like, searching around with the welding. <laughs> You're just like, poking it. <laughs> no, because if you lift off at all, it stops and you can't see anything. Yeah. So I'm just dragging the weld around. So you get like lines of weld into wherever. That's funny. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then it makes you even more mad because you, you, 
do all that stuff to set up, right? You got your rod in there, especially those old generator welders that we yeah. used to use. And, you know, you set up and you flip your hood down and you go to do it and your heat isn't turned up enough or your voltage and your rod just sticks to the metal. Oh, yeah. And you do that about five times in a row and you get yep. so damn bad. You just want to throw it <laughs> yeah. across the room. <laughs> yeah. Because it wasn't auto adjusted. You go there and just turn no. it up a little bit and then try it and then turn it up a little bit and try it. Yeah. And yeah. Not a fan crazy. of stick welding. Yeah. yeah. That's how I learned. I learned on stick welding and then we got That's in the shop. I and, too, but I never did get good, at it, good enough at it. So. Yeah. They busted out those uh, MIGs, and I was like, this is a dream come true. I was mm-hmm. like, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't know what to do. And then, you know, we'd go out and work on a job site, and all we had was stick welders to bring with us on the job site. I'm like, this is crap again. <laughs> <laughs> and get spooled quick. Sucks. I yeah. think a lot for what I'm going to do, too. I don't know if I'm going to learn stick welding for a while. It's just no like reason. I, that's, what, that's what it is. It's the stuff I'm doing. Yeah. You know, you just MIG weld it and grind the hell out of it. Yeah, I mean, unless go. you have, like, a little welder to where it can't weld thick stuff, that's yeah. the only reason you would use the stick, I think. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I can could be well, wrong. I don't know how much can go about welding. almost up to, like, a quarter of an inch. Almost. Right. I think it's, like, one thickness less than a quarter yeah, of an like inch. Yeah, like, three sixteenths or something. A quarter of an inch is thick-ass steel, mm-hmm. dude. That's a huge, you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. I'll probably only do eighth inch anyway. It's pretty normal at work sometimes for quarter inch really that seems mm-hmm. just well crazy for structural thing. stuff i guess that's so we, true. well i mean like i don't angle do it, but the welder stuff? guy he he'll build like these big racks and stuff for places oh that makes sense like for storage and yeah things like that i get it but for what i'm doing i, I won't need no. it i don't think so we, we always of, use almost uh good oh i was just gonna say almost all the stuff we do for like furniture wise is like eighth inch wall Mm, uh, I learned how to use stick welders because, like I said, that's when you're on the job site. That's all you had. You know, you couldn't take MIG MIG welders with you uh, then. So, you know, we all we had was stick welders. So, when I learned, uh, I was working for a company. I was actually working for my dad, and I was making metal frames that gas pumps sit on before they pour, pour the concrete and stuff. So I had to mostly angle angle iron and stuff like that, and uh, stick weld them together. And then when I went to work for the metal fab company, um, we did all kinds of stuff with stick welding because we would have to go in these uh, like co-ops, like fertilizer plants or whatever. And it was all stick welding Um, Mm. and it was a pain in the butt, but I just kind of got used to it. But, you know, the only benefit to it is mobility because it's on a generator. You know, most of the time it's a generator welder. So you've got a generator, you've got power and you can weld at the same time. Oh, that's cool. But they have big ones now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they do, like, portable MIG ones that everybody yeah, just takes we just sold one. Really? Yeah, because we're, like, we're not going to leave the shop to weld anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now, if so. you use the um, the wire that has the gas in it. Yeah, it's garbage. I've always heard that. I've never used it before, but they wouldn't even buy it's it. It's not gas. It's just flux. Yeah. It's called flux Yeah, core. flux. Yeah. Oh, we so, have. This one can do flux core, but yeah, don't <laughs> the do guy it. came over, he was like, don't ever do it. No. You're fine. Just yeah. I mean, you can and it'll work, now. but it'll look like crap. Mm. It'll like leave slag and have a bunch of like you know splatter everywhere. And yeah, the air because the argon blows every all the you know impurities away from the weld, and that's what keeps a good weld. Yeah, but the yeah, flood, that's what I'm it, not actually sure exactly how it works. But yeah, that's I'm pretty sure good. that's how it works because I d- <laughs> well that's, no, that's how, how, how that works. I don't know how the flux part the flux core oh. works. So the uh, I tried I did weld I was welding without the argon without it because you can't but <laughs> yeah totally. and I could not figure out of what I was doing wrong I was like jeez dude it's just like pop, 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 and just kept popping and I was like yeah. I don't know what's going on but I think something's gonna explode and uh, <laughs> and then I, I like checked everything and I was like oh crap the gas isn't on as soon as I turned on it was like super smooth and yeah. it's like well there's That's that funny. yeah. So. Brandon, do you all ever uh, take the five gallon bucket, turn it upside down, and put the gas to it underneath it, and then run gasoline all the way back into the shop and then light the gasoline on fire? Not yet, but I know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it blows the five gallon bucket up there about as far as you can see it. <laughs> what? Well, we got like 20 foot ceiling, so that should be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, don't try that at home. Shh, uh, don't tell Aaron. 
Hey, you know, I also I was looking at your stories, Jesse, and it made me laugh. You were using those, which are really cool, those armor tool uh, clamps, you know? Yeah. We never had stuff like that when I was welded. We just welded it to the bench. That's how we clamp stuff. Really? Yeah. You welded it yeah. and just tack welded it and then just would tack weld it to the bench and then you pop it off. it off with a hammer and then take it to the grinder and just grind it off the tack. That's hilarious. Yeah. It works amazing. And yeah, I mean, you've sure got a metal does. table. It's not going to hurt it at all. Yeah. Yeah, those yeah we do that sometimes like because we just have a flat metal top no dog yeah that's all we had so in the center if we need a clamp we'll clamp around the edge but in the center you just weld to the table yeah these these ones are pretty good i have uh it's a six foot long table and i only have six well i have two rows of six dog holes so it's not very much but the clamps are pretty long and wide yeah. or, and then um yeah, so I, you could space them out pretty far, and they get pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I didn't oh. do much in the shop. Well, I got that that urn kind of. Gl- Did you see my mistake? No. Oh, so the urn I'm making is like uh, I'm making it out of just four quarter walnut. So I had Mike Coffee CNC out a heart in it, and then poured epoxy in it. So it's like a purple, um, purple epoxy in the heart, and then it's just walnut. But so. I want to use dominoes on the miters, right? So I put it out at 45 and used a test piece, a cutoff of the same thickness material, put one through it, went all the way through, did another one. And it was like what I thought was too close to the inside of the miter. And so I did another one just a little bit further down. It worked fine. Didn't go through anything. So I just marked my dominoes, did all, (laughs) did all the dominoes on the rest of it, flipped them over. Every single one went through the whole piece. Oh. And I was like, oh, be no. kidding me. Yeah. So luckily I made it bigger than it was originally going to be because I was like, eh, it wouldn't hurt to have it a little bigger. So I made it bigger, but now it ended up like right at what it was supposed to be anyways because I cut all, I had to cut them all back down to start mm-hmm. over. It's well, like, good thing they were too big. Dude, I don't know what it is with me and miters, but we don't I get along miters. very well. <laughs> yeah. I hate miters. You've not the, had a very good look the, with them. The angles worked good, by the way. They were not off. <laughs> However, the dominoes went all the way through. <laughs> I what, did you cut like, the, what did you cut the miters with? My table saw. Oh, yeah. See, not there's the track there you saw. Go. That's for sure. And I set it to like 45.1 or whatever. So the outside would be closed more than the inside. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But it works, works pretty good. But that's about hmm. all I did in the shop. I've been messing with the house. I went to Home Depot to buy a 18-gauge Brad Nailer that was uh, cordless because I was putting up baseboards and stuff around the house. And I was like, I'm not dragging my air hose through the whole house. So I went to home Depot, grabbed what I thought was an 18 gauge nailer, went and bought it. It was 23 gauge. So I went and returned, went back right back in the store, returned it. And he's, I was like, I just got to go get the 18 gauge. So I went, grab another one, 23 gauge, grab another one, 23 gauge. They don't carry the 18 gauge Makita Brad nailer, but they carry the 23 gauge. Oh, like sucks. at all ever they don't ever have it really yeah so you have to and, order it yeah oh, at sucks. least at my home depot i'm like are you guys serious right now they have milwaukee ones ryobi one two different ryobi DeWalt ones. ones dewalt rigid yeah. rigid yeah everything not the milwaukee or not the makita and that's all i have batteries for i'm like i'm mm-hmm. not gonna buy the bridge like the rigid one and a battery and a charger because you have to buy them separate and I'm like, I'm not going three hundred dollars deep into this. Like, so I just bought a longer airline. <laughs> no, really? So you yeah. just bought a longer hose. I just like, went back, and then I had to wait in line for the guy that I had dropped the stuff off with because apparently the other three people weren't smart enough to transfer it to their computer. Dude, I was livid. I was so pissed. <laughs> the adventures of the big box stores. Yeah. So dumb. I ha- I have an 18 gauge Dewalt. I love it. Yeah. It's come mm-hmm. in handy so many times, whether it's ship lab too. or right. Well, whatever. the ones I have are awesome. They're the Aero Aero fastener ones. Yeah, but they're awesome. But they're all the hose, automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And plus, the my freaking air compressor is tiny. It's one of those like yeah, mine sucks. Lunchbox ones. Whatever. It's a twenty gallon, but it's like a husky. So the motor's like this little electric thing. Mm. It's pretty horrible. Yeah, I got a pretty good size air compressor under my house, but. I love that DeWalt battery operated um, nailer. Just that I have say under gauge. your house. Yeah, I actually. So the access, so my shop and the yeah, access to go underneath my house is in my shop. So mm. I just open that up and put the air compressor underneath the house and then run the hose out. So oh, that's cool. And you can't I can barely hear it inside the shop. Yeah, that's awesome. Mine's so loud. 
I did that after uh, the very first time I ever did a podcast. I was on um, Donnie's podcast. Was mm-hmm. the what's it called now? He changed uh, the name of it. Maker oh, minded. Yeah. Maker Make minded. minded was, I was uh, I was the last podcast before he changed the name on it. Um, oh. But anyway, I was in there doing the podcast, and I was in my shop doing it at the time, and my air compressor came on in the middle of it and scared the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> in That's the awesome. middle of the podcast. And he laughed so hard. Um, and then my phone started ringing, and I tried to turn my phone off, but I held down the button too long, and it dialed 911, and then a siren started going off on my phone <laughs> in the middle of the podcast. To be fair, uh, though. This podcast isn't much better than what you just described either. So <laughs> we're on the pretty much the same the same par for that. Uh, I almost uh, like sent you a video oh, last good. night because my girlfriend was watching Dumb and Dumber, yeah. and the cop where the cop comes up to the window, he's like, "Pull over!" He's like, "No, it's cardigan." That's like, <laughs> yeah, right. nah, me. I should wear it again. I can't get my phone out quick enough to do it. All right, all right. Question, Sam. We're back. Sorry, Sam, your brother's a diva and you know the drink. <laughs> Me on the other Whatever. hand, I line all mine up right yeah, here. Yeah, so you line it up. all up. It's hard. To, I can't line up. Like, can you imagine if I get all the stuff for an old fashioned just over here and I'm just like sitting here mixing drinks as it's like, only no, like keep talking. I'm good. Just it's not only like two things. No, it's like five things. Oh. It's yeah. bourbon. Well, I mean, obviously ice, but bourbon. It's an orange peel, a marish a mar- maraschino cherry. I forget how you mm-hmm. say it. Something yeah. like that. Bitters. And then you can either use a, sh- a sugar cube or simple syrup. Mm. I know three I out of those mix. five things you just said. Yeah. So I have like an orange peel can. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. And in the orange peel, the orange peels, instead of like having an orange, you have to like freaking peel it off. And then you have an orange that you have to either eat or throw away. It's just a can with a bunch of peels that are in syrup. That's orange syrup, like flavored syrup. So you just hmm. like literally, and it doesn't have to be refrigerated. So you just leave it and you just. I was yeah. going to say, it seems like it'd be easier in. to just get some like orange flavored syrup. Yeah. So that. that's is like orange peels that are dried. I assume, mm. I assume they're dried, but they're in the syrup. So you can just scoop it out and put it mm. in. I wonder Pretty what cool. happened if you just use like one of those like uh dehydrated oranges, like you get at like Trader Joe's or whatever the hell. Be probably, I don't know. Have you had no. those? It probably amazing. doesn't have quite as much flavor. Probably tastes like shit. I used to feed those to my sugar glitter. Hey, uh, remind me about Am- <laughs> remind me about Amazon. Just learned a new fact, Jesse. Amazon what? Jesse. It is sugar remind- glider. <laughs> <laughs> like, his name was. I like his how name was I just Earl. said it like no big deal. Oh yeah, I used to feed those to my pet squirrel. Uh, anyways, <laughs> wait, <laughs> what you said? Did you really say that? Your pet? What? Okay. So he said sugar glider, which is it's a, a sugar squirrel. glider, it's fucking a squirrel. flying squirrel. It's a flying squirrel. Yeah, you never you seen had one those? as a pet. Yeah, when I was a kid. It was <laughs> it's very, awesome. It's very Tennessean of you. Yeah. He'd that's ride around cool. on my hat bill or on my shoulder and that's just awesome. hang out. What? Wait, yeah. Yeah. wait. How are you saying this like it's a normal thing? Like, that's it's what like, I yeah. said. Yeah. All my friends had them. What? It's not a yeah. dog. He's saying, no. it's like you're, you're saying like it's like a French bulldog or something. Yeah, I got a friend. <laughs> no, it's a flying squirrel. Nobody has a, a flying little, squirrel as a pet. Like, they're literally like that big. They're tiny. And oh, really? He would I thought they were bigger than up, that. I mean, that made me a little bit bigger. I don't yeah. remember. Long time ago, Chipmunk size. Basically. He would climb up to the top of my dresser in my room and jump down and like fly to the bed. That's hilarious. You definitely like, grew up in the pioneer times. I feel like, like I for sure one of those you're now. a thousand years old. Oh my kinda, gosh. I kind of want one now. Yeah. So this was supposed to be not in the podcast. We're going to figure a way to put <laughs> yeah. this conversation Just in the podcast. That in. Jeez. Now let's take a question, JP. All right. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? So this question is for you, Jesse. Um, I know you went full time. I've been following you for a while, but when you went full time, decided to make that switch, was it difficult? Um, What concerns did you have going into it? Um, Yeah, I mean, my goal is to go full time woodworking and content creator one day, actually just delivering this custom oak table here. But yeah, let me know. Um, be curious because that's one thing I want to try to do and just always had those concerns. Well, before that, Ian, I 
just judging by the background in your uh, video there, I have so much sympathy for that because every time I try to make a video, my kids are screaming yeah. like they're oh. getting murdered in the background. Yes. <laughs> that happened in my stories today. Like I'm trying to do something. I could hear my kids running around saying they don't have clothes on after the bath <laughs> and I'm trying to do something like, well, just how it also, is. Also, uh, Ian's got a pretty awesome YouTube channel, so you should probably go follow him over there too. Mm-hmm. Anyway, take it from there, Jesse. <laughs> So first off, Ian, your stuff is awesome. Your the cinematography stuff. If you're shooting it yourself, which I don't know if you are, but if you're filming it yourself or you're having somebody come over and film it, it's great. Um, I followed you for a while. I love your pieces. I think they're really cool. Um, so for this question, I got a lot of stuff going on, uh, kind of that people don't see just on my channel. So. Um, I think it's kind of almost unfair to say like I'm a, just a content creator because I got a lot of other stuff I do as well um, that I don't really share on my channel. Um, but that being said, was it's it a male still, escort? That, that's what. I, so, so <laughs> I, I, so I moonlight. Chippendales uh, dancer. Yeah, yeah. The local, the local uh, Cash Valley <laughs> bar here in Utah. Um, no, uh, but that being said, it was still pretty freaking scary. Um, because even with all the other stuff I do on the side, um, you know, it, you're, you're jumping away from, for me, something that was super, super secure that I knew I was going to have a, you know, a check and a good, good health insurance, um, at my previous job into now we're switching health insurances to my wife's work and, um, doing kind of that, that stuff. But, um, yeah, it was scary. It was really scary, but I honestly, I just kept feeling that every day I was at work, all I was doing was thinking about being in the shop or editing content or trying to figure out the next project to do. And I like the job that I was currently doing was like more and more fleeting, you know, like it just wasn't, it, I wasn't ever present, which like the job I was doing, it's not that I wasn't present, but like the job I was doing, it's like, you need to be present at all times on high alert. And, um, it just felt harder and harder to do that. Um, so that kind of what pushed me more and more. Um, I also have some really good sponsors, you know, that, that also helped a ton when it comes to the content creator stuff. Um, Delta has been amazing to me, um, and, and continues to be great for me. So that's something that has definitely helped, uh, push me forward and helped make my decision, you know, having a relationship with them. So, you know, that's one thing that if you are going to be in this content creation space, you know, I think building those relationships with sponsors, which we talk about on here all the time, is extremely important. And I was able to do that pretty early on. Um, and a lot of it was like we talked about last time. I worked three years not getting paid and just giving away free content and tagging people like crazy and, you know, messaging whoever ran the account and building up stuff from a bunch of different sponsors. And, you know, every year you know, just curating those relationships and it's been really good. So, um, it was scary, but it was worth it. And I like having the stress and the burden on my shoulders. I don't know if you guys are like this, which I know JP has a full-time job and you have a job too, Brandon, but it seems like you're transitioning more and more into trying to make this your more serious thing. Yeah. And I like that stress though. Like the extra, like having to, like, okay, I got this sponsorship that I have to do these deliverables for coming up. Like, I like that and the hustle and all that stuff. I don't know stuff. if stress is the right word. Dude, it's stressful, I like, though. No, it is. I'm saying I don't like the stress. <laughs> like, But I do yeah, like okay. having the structure, like yeah. the deadline. Motivation. To, right, I, yeah. Yeah, I like the weight. I, I do like right. the weight of right. everything. Like, especially with me, right? Like, I got three kids a house, you know, cars and all this crap you had to pay for. And, you know, being able to be like, all right, how am I going to make extra money? Whether it's like to pay off something or, you know, to buy the next, whatever. It's like, I like that motivation to be like, okay, I got to make this video. I'm going to try to figure out this sponsorship or whatever. I like that. I like the, yeah. The business side of it's cool. Dealing with people building relationships with sponsors and stuff. I love it. Yeah. It's not so, easy. 
No. But it's it's cool when it happens. Nothing mm-hmm. nothing good is easy. Very true. It's really rewarding at the end of it. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, I think Ian, I think you're on the right path because you do really good stuff. Um I don't know how long you've been doing the content side. Um, I, it seems to me just from the stuff you're making that you're kind of in the middle where you're doing content, but you're still delivering, like you're still doing pieces as well, like for people, which I've done before, which I know Brandon did for a long time. Um, I think you're in that natural progression to keep growing as a content creator because your content is really good. Um, so I actually like you're you did this bull video where you're just cutting it on your table saw and you're spinning it. It was freaking cool. I don't know if you guys saw that, <laughs> but it was really awesome. And um, I just know. started following him as before the podcast. So I'll have to check it out after. Yeah, do it. He, he He's great. I got to check out his YouTube and I'll go subscribe if I'm not. But anyway, thanks for the question, man. So um, I was working on the bourbon tasting flight i think that's what it's called so what it's called a flight like a flight of beer but it's for bourbon tasting hold on wait i must ask you a question about it <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there yeah. uh but you'll know what yeah. i'm talking about right it looks like a charcuterie board uh mm-hmm. but they have in restaurants a lot when you order like a flight of beer or you can get a flight of whiskey or flight of bourbon um, yeah i, I decided to make one of those that, but i do that all cool. the time <laughs> yeah, Brandon, he's I did like, not expect you to know. <laughs> he's like, do you have do you have spring water, mountain water, yeah, tap water? Even, I'd like to try all it. those. I just please. walk in and they know they know me and they just bring it right over. So, just a tap water, uh, <laughs> full of whiskey. Um, but uh, it, the board that I used had a huge you know crack uh, right down the center of it. So, um. I ordered those slap stitcher things that at y'all's request on the podcast, uh, as we were talking about it, I'd never heard of it and I ordered them and they came in and they're awesome. Like I look, I bought them. I spent my own money on them. They didn't send them to me. I'm not sponsored. They're amazing. But if you want to do some inlays, um, which they have a lot of really cool stuff on there and anybody could do it. I did it with just my little battery operated trim router and it took me a couple seconds. It did, was not hard to set up. I was very, very impressed by it. So highly recommend that if you're looking to do some inlays. Um, you know, if you're doing, I mean, they have just like the typical dovetail stuff, but you could do that on your own. And I do recommend like trying that on your own because it's good to learn. But if you're doing a bunch of <laughs> just, I've never like, done no. that. I don't, I don't plan <laughs> to. Never. I'm never going to do uh, that. I'm never going to um, stitcher. I'm not doing gonna that. Never going to set as never going to set as welder either. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm never doing anything else except smart, He's smart like, mega model. Auto, let's go. Um, it was super easy, and they they turned out really, really cool. Um, the only the only complaint that I kind of have about it, it's not really a complaint, is that I ordered maple. Because uh, you order, they, it comes with the actual like mustache inlays. Because I got the mustache ones, uh, which are hilarious. And um, the maple was a little bit different color. Uh, like a couple of them were a little bit darker. One was a little bit lighter. Like you can't control the wood thing, you know, like, but if I was doing it myself, I would have cut it from the same board and they'd have been yeah. consistent. Um, but I'm not cutting my own mustaches. So <laughs> say, cut your own damn mustaches. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it's twofold like there, right? Can't be choosers. No, <laughs> yeah. Come on now. Uh, but to I be highly fair, it probably wouldn't be that hard. You could actually just use one of those as a template with a router. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Trace bit. I mean, I was make, going to do it. I had make your own damn like, mustaches. Yeah, you I had, do that. I had mustaches like tr- uh, like printed off on paper, oh, and I was hilarious. about to like transfer them onto wood and do it all myself before y'all uh, <laughs> recommended them. <laughs> that was way easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> saved you so much time. Uh, well, I'm yeah. saying you could probably just take one of those and then use a, tr- a trace bit, and you have the exact same one that will fit in the slab stitcher thing. That's actually a great idea. Yeah. Um, might have to try that out. But You're anyway, welcome. that was awesome. And Brandon, you'll be proud of me. I used epoxy for the first time in a long time. That wasn't just to fill a knot. <laughs> Dang. So I filled the entire void with some blue epoxy. Uh, you can tell that I hadn't used epoxy in a very long time because uh, when I got done filling the crack, I had a half of a container full of epoxy still left. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really go away. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always have a bunch left over. I was like, man. At um, work, Aaron's like, how did you get that far off? I was like, because mm, I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're an asshole. I'm like, well, you hired me. So. <laughs> Uh, but it turned out great. It was fun. Uh, I was, uh, I was a fun little project just to do in a day or so and get it done. But I appreciate the recommendation on the slab stitcher stuff. I just want to talk about that yeah. for a second because it really was really neat and I highly recommend it. Like I yeah, said, you're doing 30, now, you're doing now 30 have to order it. Huh? Do what? Seven. So I have to order it now. Yeah. You not have one? No. Oh, we were talking about that. I thought you had one. No. Mm, it's great. Yeah. You'll like it. Do you uh, have is one, this Jesse? a YouTube? Yeah, I have one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've I've had it for a while. I've only done a few uh, bow ties. Um, I think that's all I have. I got to order new templates and stuff if I want to do other stuff. But uh, it's been nice. It's cool. I like it. it. Adds a ton of character too. I literally put it in a coffee table that didn't need a bow tie. Like it was well, like it pop. They around. have. I was uh, just like, this is cool. I'm gonna do it. So I just did it anyway. Like it's randomly in the wood. All You're over like, the top no of the crack. table. Why did you do this? I'm like, well, hey, if you're it just making cool. cutting boards or just any kind of like where like coffee tables would be cool or a yeah. bunch of they make uh, all the states. So like I, for me oh, in the state of Tennessee, cool. you could inlay that into a cutting board extremely easy, and you know not have to have a CMC or whatever, and it would look really cool. Uh, even you know you don't need to hold together a crack or anything it just looks cool as an inlay do they have like letters i wonder like if you Mm -hmm. could order the alphabet and like you could spell people's names or something or like initials even it's possible that would be you would have to also get the plastic insert that goes with each letter so So that might get a little expensive probably so yeah but i i I think that all in all i ordered the entire thing like the guide the bit um, the full Comes plastic piece. Bit. I mean, yeah. it. Yeah, it's like it, an upcut bit type thing. It's just right? a quarter inch upcut bit, I think. But uh-huh. I didn't have one, so I just ordered what they had on there. It was fairly cheap. It wasn't anything ridiculous. I want to say I spent maybe eighty bucks, but that's that initial cost. After that, it's really not that bad. Even to yeah. order the actual inserts and stuff or whatever, uh, the actual inlays. I mean, um, it's not that yeah. bad at all. Sweet. Yeah, I would assume that if you're just doing bow ties too, you could you could trace in like what Brandon was saying and figure out if you have one as your template and you just do just make a bunch more bow ties so you wouldn't actually have to buy keep buying new bow ties, right. you know. So um, but yeah, that's very cool good. though. Uh, that's it. You but you're doing a YouTube video on that, right? I am. I am. Just got through that's filming cool. that and uh got the cigar ashtray getting edited right now. So that's going to come nice. out next. And then, and then this one, you know, I was going to put them together, but the weather delayed the slab stitcher stuff getting in. So I just split them up. That's cool. Brian, you have one coming out. Oh, you, you do, right? You have like a yeah, air the tool air, storage. Yeah. The air tool, like state, basically like the drill charging station, but for air tools. How are Most you of- hanging? How are you hanging the, did you just like attach one of the, like the, what's it yeah. called? The, the coupler thing. thing, coupler things. Yeah, that's how you, that's how they're hanging. Yeah, so I, I went a couple. I was trying to figure that out when I first did it, and I was like, thought I, I would get like an extender, you know, extension um, piece of pipe, and run it like all the way through, and then put a cap on top. So then, but I was like, that would look stupid. And so I ended up just um, actually getting like the male ones and threading them into the plywood. Just mm. drilled a hole. I think it was a half inch hole, and then just thread it. Used the threads on the on the coupler to thread it make you know that's self smart. self tap basically and yeah. uh it holds pretty good that's awesome kind of surprise looks so. really cool yeah i'll have plans for those and uh or for it and a video coming out next saturday or by the time this drops two days from that day <laughs> or friday friday or saturday i don't know yeah. but uh yeah that'll be the first one that i'll have uh also a blog post on or hopefully that's the plan anyway. So trying to get my website in order to where I have more content on there. Yeah, me too. I got to make a, I got to make a bed post and actually do the plans for the bed. I just posted to YouTube because in the mm. YouTube video, I say there's free plan or there's plans available. Cause I'm not sure if I'm going to charge for them or not. It's like, there's plans available. And right now they're not available. Yeah. So like in the description, well, I'm like, <laughs> currently not available. And because like, it was like coming soon on the ones I've made, like my drill chart, I think my drill charging station and my assembly table, neither one of those videos I say in the video, there's plans, but I, I've, 
put it at the top of the description then i pinned a comment saying it as well yeah. <laughs> like cross my fingers hopefully but yeah those sell pretty decently yeah so we'll say i gotta i gotta create plans for that and then i'll have plans for uh the nightstands too um which are really it's really really simple i yeah. just use pocket holes for pretty much everything and i'm gonna probably use pocket holes for the drawers too i was how'd actually your, gonna, how'd your edge banding go it actually went pretty well. Um, did I tell you what I was what I ended up doing? Well, you're at no, you're just asking us. So instead of edge banding, well, buying edge banding, I actually just cut my own right. <laughs> edge banding. Right, That's, and I, that was like the thing that people used to do before. That makes stuff sense. keeps getting easier, you know, like automatic welders. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just cut it, and I just kept. I had a piece of hickory that I already had milled out from the bed, and it was just like a three inch piece or something like that. And I just kept, like, I put it up to my table saw and just, like, lined it up and looked. And I was like, okay, I think that's close to, like, a, maybe a little less than a sixteenth of an inch, like, overhang. And I just kept feeding it through. And then I get these super thin strips. Mm-hmm. And then I just used, um, uh, well, I tried to use, I used tight bond first. And it just took so long to freaking dry that I was like, I'm not doing this because it would take me forever to do each side. So I just ended up using just star bond. And... It worked fantastic. Like I did a test piece too. I was like, I got to make sure this works. So I got like an extra piece and I just did star bond to a extra piece of the, uh, yeah, the MDF ply or whatever it was. And then I put the edge banding on, let it dry for a little bit with the accelerator. And then I literally just picked like, there's a bunch of excess hanging off by like a good 10 inches on each side i literally grabbed it from the edges and did this and it like <laughs> stayed on and it was like bouncing up and down and i was like nice. oh it's stuck pretty good so huh. i was That's like well cool. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stay with this and so i did i put a ton of the star bond on because i wanted to make sure that yeah it really plus held. that's your they're yours right yeah, they're for me anyway. Yeah, so, so that'll happens. be that'll be good then you can test them long term it's a test yeah and then i what i did too is because you know There'll be pieces like I put the clamps on them while they were drying, even though I used the accelerator and stuff. I still use those bandy, the band clamps or whatever they're called from. I was uh, laughing the other day. I, sh- I was told her and I said, can you <laughs> believe that they actually name these things bandy clamps? Well, I don't think they are. They're no, just they called are. band clamps. No, are no. they called bandy no, clamps? No, they're called bandy clamps. Oh, because yes, I thought I yeah. was screwing up after the I rock, listened to it's myself the talking about ones, the Rockler Bandy yeah. clamps. They're, yeah. cr- they're great, though. They're fantastic. It's good it. marketing, actually. It's, look, and we're so, talking about it. <laughs> yeah and so i i use those and they work pretty good and then i went back and like around the edges if there's any little crack i just put a little bit of glue in there like and then sanded it and you can't tell at all it how'd you trim really it good. off the edges or did you just cut it to the exact size i tried cutting it too well so like i had them overhang and i took a little razor blade and mm. i like made a cut line on it right. and then just bent it off and broke no, it i mean like on the edges yeah what do you mean like on the top on the corners no, no oh yeah i just sanded so it was okay. it, it well so the three the one i had was already pre-plane the, uh, god forbid out. you pull out a hand plane <laughs> he doesn't have one. Oh yeah he does yeah, do never been one. out of the box it's never been out of the box <laughs> yeah yeah god i want to get pull that bad boy out and you i know, have this flush really cool up. <laughs> This really cool thing called the Merca Sandard. Okay, go check them out at <laughs> www.mercausa.com. And um, and I so I sanded it because what I had was a already milled out piece from the bed, and it was just a little bit thicker than three quarters of an inch, so it was perfect. It was just over, yeah. So it only hung up like just a tiny bit. So all I had to do was take my sander, just a few passes, and it was perfect. Yeah. So I did that front and bottom. It was so easy. That's cool. Um, and then the edges, yeah, I just broke off as close as I could and sanded it down. Yeah, I did like the complete opposite of that on my air tool station because I was like, I don't want to have exposed plywood edge. I want to like do another step. So I did, I had some walnut fast cap stick on edge banding and I used that, which was kind of challenging because I did the angle and I was like, I wonder if this stuff will flex enough without breaking to go like around the angle. And it did surprisingly. Hmm, that's yeah. cool. And it sticks pretty good. And then How it comes. How thick is that? Like oh, a 30 second of an thin. inch? Not even that, I don't think. Oh, really? Super thin. Yeah. That's cool. It's like a 64th. It, it's in millimeters. I think it's like 1.5 millimeter. I don't remember. Hmm. Couldn't tell you. Super thin. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely will break like on the ends because the fast cap has like the tools to do it, which I got asked a million questions about it on that post I did when I showed 
showed me putting it on like what are these tools because it comes with a trimmer and like a sander to bevel the edges and like it's just like all in one system but we'll see if it holds up over time i have it on a project on that walnut entertainment center that i did and i haven't heard any haven't had any callbacks on it so it must be working pretty good that's cool yeah i've tried i actually tried to look up the reason I made my own is because I had to, I think, did I tell this on the last podcast? I had to buy like 250 feet. It was like my only option was, it was mm-hmm. like 250 feet for like 50 bucks for yeah, whatever. Buy it like, all or nothing. Yeah. I was like, I don't need that much. Like that, I'm just going to have to store it forever. And then if I like, I mean, Hickory's a pain in the ass to work with and I'm not going to yeah. get a good deal like I did last time. So it's like, well, I'm probably not going to be using Hickory very much again. I'm not buying 250 feet. So I end up just doing it. But, you know, nobody's like I looked up Rockler. Rockler says a bunch of different uh, edge banding and they don't have Hickory. Most Amazon only had one person and it was like some sketchy no name. Like it wasn't Amazon Prime or anything. It was like some weird thing that was pretty expensive. That seems really weird because Hickory cabinets are pretty common. I know that. Well, the only place I found, well, there was one on Amazon, like I said, but then other than that, it was like, it was uh, hardwoodveneer.com or something like that. Did you check FastCap? I didn't check check FastCap, but I checked Rockler and Rockler only had like maple, uh, walnut, (laughs) kind of the popular ones. So, well, worked out. I'm pretty happy with it. My wife's stoked. That's cool. I got to build the drawers now and I hate drawers. So we'll see. There's a good YouTube video out there. <laughs> you should probably check it out. What's it called? I actually don't think yours would work for mine, to be Why? 100% honest. Because <clears throat> your my drawers, drawers aren't cool enough. Sorry. My my end tables or nice stands are 40 inches wide. Mm-hmm. And so the drawers are going to be massive. And I really, yeah. I don't, I think I have to use three quarters of an inch. Gotcha. Um, for the drawers that's why because i was gonna do it your way because i was like Mm -hmm. i have a data stack this would be perfect plus like it would just be fun to do and learn and i just think they're gonna be too they're gonna be too long i think like with that thin bottom well what you can do on this now i don't disagree with you at all but what you can do to beef up the drawers that i made on that quarter 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 system is take half inch plywood for the bottom cut it the same dimensions as you would quarter inch but then put a quarter inch rabbit on all four sides. It mm. slides into the dado and it beefs yeah. up that drawer. So it sits underneath. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. It goes I flush with that. the bottom of it at that point, but it really beefs it up a lot. Yeah. That's a good idea. I also have a bunch of extra three quarter inch cutoffs, which might make me just want to do the three quarter inch. Like I have a ton that are going to be perfect for the size. So what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Pocket holes? Probably pocket hole. Yeah. I don't know. It's not a bad we'll idea. See. It's very if DIY. If I use three quarter, very I like DIY the pocket hole system. Well, this whole thing's very DIY, right? Like the whole thing's pocket hole, pretty much. And Just so, okay. but like, that's a, that's kind of how I wanted to make it. Like right. my bed was actually pretty simple, even though I milled out each panel, which made it a lot less simple. You could just use plywood. And you do the exact same steps I do, just skip all the milling process, right? And the glue up and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's a pretty simple process. And I kind of wanted these to match as well. So somebody that's not brand, brand new, but somebody that's just getting into kind of learning stuff, I think can do either one of these projects and I'm going to have the plans available. So that, that's kind of my bread and butter. And I like doing it that way. And for me, it's getting the job done and I don't know, not, not over complicating things. Yeah. Okay. Talking about pocket holes. Um, I just got a new pocket hole system that I've not yet used, but I'm getting it set up. I got it out of the box the other day and looking at it. It's the uh, made by Castle, Castle Pockets. Mm. You mm-hmm. ever seen them? Yeah. Um, yeah. They look the cool. one I got is the, they make some like industrial pocket hole stuff, but the one yeah. I got it's is It's actually like, a really old. I think we've talked about this on here. Have we? But it's a, it's a, it's actually an old, com- pretty old company. It's like the They've original. been around about 40 years. Yeah. It's like How the many original times we ask that question? Hole. Have we I talked about this already? Yeah, hey, at talk, this point, I'm gonna tell you anyway. <laughs> Stop off, yeah. off the air too much. Yeah. Stop. It's what uh, all the cabinet shops yeah. use. <laughs> just stop caring and just talk about it again, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, it, yeah, they they make some industrial stuff, but they have one. I think it's the 110. I think is the what it's called, but it's a smaller one that fits on your uh, bench, and you can actually, if you have a very large piece, you can actually pick it up and slide it on by hand and do it. Um, 
but it's all made of metal and it it is a two step system. Like you you put the board in, you clamp it down, then the router comes up and makes the pocket hole, and it makes an extremely clean pocket hole, like way cleaner than the Craig stuff. But it's um, a square, right? It is. It's like a square hole. It is. It's a little different. Right. It looks a little yeah. different. Um, but they make they not only do they make the like the fillers for it, so if you wanted to fill it, uh, mm-hmm. you can. But they're also coming out with uh, I think pretty soon like a jig you can buy and then you can make your own um like uh, oh, cool hole fillers you know out of wood or whatever it comes like you know you can use your router or whatever nice um but cool. it's a two part so you do you do that and it, it makes the pocket hole and then you take your drill from the backside and drill the hole um and it is a two part system but it's extremely easy it has really good dust collection and um I just like the pocket holes on them. Like they're just really, really clean and it's, it's an extremely easy system, but um, I say all that, but I haven't used it extensively yet. I've just seen it used and that's the reason why I got it. Um, but they're, uh, they seem pretty cool. I don't know. I'm excited to see it. I, I would equate it to like the foreman, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's yeah. kind of like the same price range, the same kind of deal. Yeah. It looks really cool. I'm curious to see if you can do bigger panels because mm-hmm. I did a bunch of big panels on my foreman and it was obviously my, the foreman has such a wide base. You can literally throw up just panels on there and just do the pot holes. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing, the one that you, the one that you got that I was looking at the one that's above that one. And that looks really cool too. Cause it's has the big old base for the yeah. stuff. Um, but I know the price jump is quite a bit to the yeah. second one, but yeah, I liked how clean it looks. It looks, it looks better yeah. than the, my foreman, the way um, it cuts and stuff. Well, it, yeah, it, it does. And I, and I'm, I mean, you say it looks better, but like I rarely do stuff. Well, what I was gonna say is like, I, I think that performance is probably going to outweigh how it looks because rarely yeah. do I do pocket holes where they're going to be seen. Right. Mm, and then yeah. the Craig actually kind of gets a, leg up on it a little bit because you can use dowels to fill those yeah um, where these yeah. you kind of have to have their stuff or their jig to make you know that's uh, what it is so you know i, I don't know we're, we're gonna i'm gonna test it test out, out and see yeah sweet yeah can't that's put cool. a round peg in a square hole well, you can try though <laughs> I mean, technically you can <laughs> oh you're well, so savvy we, brandon yeah <laughs> Well, we went way over it's uh, late. this time, so it's it's. A, we're, I'm drunk. It's late. Uh, Mullen's hammered. <laughs> JP's got flying squirrels. Mm. Oh well, hey, thanks for um, thanks for uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, the best thing, to, if you guys want to support the podcast, the best thing you can do is just reach out to our sponsors, send them a message, let them know you heard about them on the podcast. That helps us tremendously. Make sure you rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Rate us. Um, We appreciate all the support. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, too, because the YouTube videos are getting better and better as we incorporate more and more stuff. Um, Anyway, thanks for watching. Go out to the shop and go build something. My old fashion's out. I gotta get another one. Don't show us the wrong time. <laughs> I was like, that Sorry. was aggressive. <laughs> I thought he came across <laughs> like a the wrong video or something. <laughs> so like, no, no, no. Stop Holy the podcast. Shit. Not <laughs> this one. Not this one. My wife's gonna oh, be so mad. You can't see my sexy dance. I'm sorry. Let me put it away. Yeah.